In this episode of the Azure Essential Show, we're continuing our conversation with two Microsoft uh, Corporate Vice Presidents, uh, talking about data as a corporate asset in the Gen AI era. Uh, so let's jump back in. So Vijay, ask, let me ask a dumb question here. Um, when you say survey your data state, I think that that's worth a little bit of an expansion because I think that's such a fundamental element uh, to really understand your data and look at it. So give a little bit of a thought, um, share here uh, what, what you would do if you were the CEO or CIO, CDO, whatever you might be, what would you do uh, in order to survey your data? Yeah. So I need some really good data scientists sitting with me uh, because surveying data requires, I'll give you three or four techniques. So one is called Identity, so you can't look at the entire data, you know, billions of records. You need a shorter, compact way of understanding your data. So technique one is core set. What is the minimal set of customers, patients, you know, equipment that I need that actually gets the job done? Then you can see the gaps more easily. So let me, let me ask one more thing. When you say get the job done, what do you mean with that? So, for example, I'm trying to classify a customer. Okay. I'm trying to make a decision that something is broken and this is how to fix it. What is the minimal set of data that I have out of the data that I have that's actually supporting the decision? So okay. then you can understand what you have and you can also the understand the value of a data acquisition candidate. So this is a compact way of understanding data. A couple more ways, which is this thing called support set, where you don't look at actual records, but you look at average records, average human, average dog, average tractor. So again, you try and understand what categories does your data support, what it doesn't, right? You also have things like data set distillation, which is a mathematical technique, where at a higher level, you sort of can see the clustering of your data, distribution of your data. And the last one is, of course, you can create this thing called data manifolds, where you can take the data distribution, distribution in a vector space, and also put the decisions in the same space, and you can see which decisions aren't being covered. So basically, there are systematic techniques that are available to data scientists, and we now need to raise awareness of that at the C-suite level, that it's not something that data scientists do when they're creating a solution. It's something you can do when you're setting a strategy. That makes a lot of sense, Vijay. No, and, and, and thank you, Vijay. And I want to make sure uh, that we also uh, we get a little bit of your perspectives from, from, from an Azure point of view. So, so let me talk about, because I guess what we're getting into is how, how do we gear up for this new world, right? I mean, it's, it's a brand new world. We have to look at things in different ways. So, so what kind of mechanisms, right? I mean, what kind of patterns are available for enterprises to act upon this ambition, ambition right? And, and I'm thinking here really in specifically, I mean, what's the affordance in Azure? I mean, what, what do you see uh, coming down the pipe um, uh, from your perspective, Uli? Well, I think before we go uh, to that aspect, which obviously is critical, let me augment uh, one element that Vijay was talking about, which is acquisition of data. Um, obviously, you can look at your own data, you can um, acquire data, you can do synthesis, but there is another thing that is really important in this world now, it's you're starting to share networks or you create networks of partnerships with other enterprises that either are in the same business or they are in complementary business and you start to share data. Uh, that's something that has been also going on for a while, but I think again, Gen AI is starting to drive a real uh, re renaissance of this one because we are seeing a lot of usage cases where this makes sense, medical research, uh, supply chain networks and so forth. Uh, in order to do that, you have to start to think about the enablement of this stuff. And that comes back to your question, which is uh, something about governance. We talked about this before, um, but governance comes in a number of forms. The first one is to think about what data do you have? Where does it come from? How does you transform it? Data lineage, those kind of things, so that you can trace the input that when the model makes decisions, uh, that you know where the data came from. Is the data good quality? and so forth. You need to think about responsible AI. Is it biased? Do you have um, enough data to make sure that you represent an inclusive and diverse uh, point of view and mm -hmm. stuff like that? Then you have to go into, if you are participating in data sharing networks, you have to think about 
what is the rights that I want to give my partners in this network? And then how do you enforce those rights um, mm -hmm. as part of a policy? And so mm -hmm. those are efforts that are going on. And then there's the regulation that's coming in. The EU is specifically um, or particularly active in this space. So there's two important pieces. One is the EU Data Act, which is really about when you share data, you need to say what's the purpose of this data. And if it's originating from uh, consumers or external parties to yourself, you have to A, flag it, mm -hmm. and B, have to make sure that the usage of that data is consented upon and the consent is shared with the um, shared, sharing partner so that uh, you effectively, you still are responsible for whatever the data uh, rules are, even if there is a third party that's not processing the data. Um, obviously, yeah. there's precedent where this didn't work. And so that's why the EU is pushing this very hard. And then the EU AI Act is also starting to say, uh, put up rules of how AI models can work on data. And that's obviously building on top of the EU Data Act um, is driving from there. So from my perspective, really thinking through PAI management, policy understanding, removal of uh, specific data that you do not want to share. And then again, funnily enough, AI comes in to help you with differential privacy and other techniques that effectively enable you to share data without violating uh, any of the consent elements and or the rules that are coming out of uh, places like the EU, but also the US and other uh, regulatory environments. Thank you, Uli. This is great. Vijay, do you want to briefly comment as well before we wrap up? Uh, thanks indeed, Jacob. Just two points for me. One is application designers, I think, will need to start thinking about multimodality almost as a fundamental concept. And app models and, and in various development tools, we will have the ability to add more and more modalities, just like today. We can add more and more data sources and connect them. Now we have to connect multiple modalities. And that's a completely new idea. Vijay, Vijay, expand a little bit on what you mean with that, because the term is obviously being bandied about a lot, but I don't think we really have dove in. What does that mean? Right. So today, uh, I could have some data about customers, how they've set orders, how much they buy, and so on. And we may have focus group data or customers, you know, in-home survey data on how customers use our product. And today we have techniques of putting those together. But now as the information that's coming in from the customer side might be in the form of device signals, might be in the form of videos that people share and so on. How do you join that information? Additional modalities that, you know, are people willing to share at least, uh, you know, with their permission, Apple Watch signals, for example. So how do you add modalities into existing modalities becomes almost like how do I add one tabular data set to another tabular data set? So that's the kind of application model thinking. If we make that easy, that will become very, very, very interesting. Yeah, the, the way I always talk about this, VJ, is humans actually use a lot of techniques to communicate. Um, again, we use words a lot, obviously, but we use images quite a lot. There is this nice saying that a single image is worth a, a thousand words. And now you're saying you're going from word to image to now also video. And I think once you have those, you can start to really look at applications as a very, very different thing. Right. Absolutely. That's exactly it. And, and, and guys, just to interrupt here, uh, because we're, we're coming up on time. Um, it's clear that, I mean, data is such a deep point. I mean, we, we, we can just keep going and we should, and we'll have more sessions on this, but for now, I, 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 I want to thank you guys uh, very much for this uh, uh, very insightful conversation. Right? I'm looking forward to, uh, to continuing. The next session will be discussing uh, co-pilots as a universal vehicle for, for breaking processes and, and discipline cycles. And of course, I'll invite all, all the listeners to, to, to tune in. I mean, we're looking forward to, uh, to the next session. So uh, guys, thank you. Thank you indeed, Jacob. It's been thank fun. you, Jacob. See you soon.